Hey guys and welcome to part 4 of this tutorial. What we're going to do today is we're going to actually code the UI. We're going to make the buttons do what they should. We'll add in some error correction, for example not allowing the uh, score to go below 0 and making sure the dice counter is between 1 and 20, etc, etc. And we will get the app up and running today. So let's get started. So this is where I left you last time. The user interface here does nothing at the moment. It's just the set of buttons. What we need to do is we need to add the JavaScript that controls what these buttons do. Now this sounds complicated, but it's really not, and we'll go over it now. So the first thing you need to know about JavaScript is you should always put it at the bottom of your page, at least for now. So we'll go to the bottom of our page, and we won't go below the body tag because JavaScript is content, you know, it does stuff, so you always put it within the, if it's content, it goes in body, and we'll create a script tag. <clears throat> this tells your browser to actually look here for scripts, so for example, when we add functions to the buttons, when we add functions to the buttons, they will run from here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start adding functions, so we're going to create a function called ink deck, or increase, decrease, now all this function is going to do is it's going to increase or decrease the life depending on whether you click an increase or a decrease button. Now we'll put it all in one function, we could do it in four separate functions, but we'll put it in one just for, for, for tidiness reasons to be honest, and it's quite easy anyway. So we'll, uh, for the minus one button, we'll add an on click, which means when the button is clicked, equals, and um, we'll run uh, ink deck brackets, and now in the brackets we can put um, what we want to send to the function, so this button is minus one, so we'll send it minus one. You'll see why that is in a moment, don't worry too much about it. Right, so you can see we've added an on click with which executes a function ink deck plus minus one. Okay, so now when that button is clicked, it'll run, it'll look for a function called ink deck, and if it finds ink deck, it'll run it. So we need to create that function. Now, I actually forgot, but you have to close script tags. In there, we'll add a function, ink deck, since that's what we called it. And now here we're going to put a variable. Now, a variable, if you don't know, is just a storage unit. A uh, function is a part of code, like it's what, if you call it, it runs, basically, simple as that. So we'll give it a variable name. Now I'm going to call it plus minus, because well, the number we're giving it is telling it what to do. So this one will minus one, for example. And we will start coding it. So first thing we'll do is we will turn plus minus into an integer, because at the moment, we have it in these tags, which turns it into a string. A string is text, like hello would be a string. An integer, however, is one, two, three, four, and any number you can get by adding or minusing one from one, basically. So we'll add a, we'll turn it into an integer, so plus, minus, equals, now JavaScript has a function called parse int plus minus. That's basically saying take what's in plus minus and turn it into an integer. Nice and easy. Now what we'll do is we'll work out what our current life is going to be. So we'll create a variable called current life uh, equals. Now we'll do this step by step. This is going to be a little complicated. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get the value that's in here. This is why we gave it that ID. The reason it has that ID is it means we can call it and do things to it. So to get an element's content like that, so we want to get what's inside life. We want to get what's inside life. So you can see there's 20 in there at the moment. What you do is you do document dot get element by ID, i.e. get the element by its ID. Search for life. Now there'll be a load of functions you can run on it. The one we're going to run is inner HTML. Now that's going to be a string again because it's inside a div, so it's going to be treated as a string. So let's parse it as a let's parse it as an integer just to be on the safe side. Can you remember how we do that? 
pars int, put it in brackets, and now it says take whatever's in there and we'll ram it into current life basically. Now that we've done that, we will start doing the maths. So we'll do a plus, plus, minus. Now the reason we've done that is what's happening here is it'll go current life equals pars int document get element id value life uh, get get life basically life is currently twenty plus minus one. So twenty plus minus one is nineteen. So that has worked correctly. Now that's all great. So that is that function essentially done. All we have to do now is put the current life back in the div. So we have to update the 20. To do that, it's very similar to how you get um, the life. You just do a document dot get element by ID. Search for life again. Dot inner HTML. I get the inner HTML and make it equal to current life. There. Now, because we've opened the function here, as in we've opened a uh, curly brace, you always have to put functions in curly braces, we're going to close it here. So now that we've done that, we can test it. So let's save it, and F5 it, and it obviously doesn't work. What have I done wrong here? Let's find out. Uh, uh, now let's see if the function is actually running. The way to do this is easy. Just put an alert running or something. And then if it's running, when you click the button, it should pop up a box which says running, which it does, which means the function is running, which means there's something wrong somewhere else. What am I missing? Oh, yeah. Herp. You can see that it has to be a lowercase d. Case is important here. Now, I'm not going to edit that out because I want you to see what debugging looks like. So we'll delete that and see if it works now. F5. And you can see the life decrements. Now, none of the other buttons do anything because we haven't added the on click event. So let's get adding it to it. So for each one, we'll add it. Change that to a plus one. Change that to a minus 5. Mm, what have I missed out? I'm missing out the speech marks. We'll add the other one here. Add the speech marks. I missed it when I copied and pasted. And make that one plus 5. Save that. And then run it. And I didn't refresh it. There we go. So if we take plus one, it'll go up. Minus one, it'll go down. Minus five, it'll go down. Plus five, it'll go up. So it seems to work. But there's a bug. Now, when you test for bugs, you want to test for values that are outside what you want. So the values that we want so far are any value between zero and infinity, basically. So we'll test down below zero. Oh, no, we've gone below zero. Why is that? Because what we've done is we've basically told it to add all minus values. There's no checking to see if the value's gone below zero. So how do we do that? Easy. All you have to do is an if statement. If the current life is less than zero, set current life to zero. Easy. And now with that tiny modification, let me run it again, try again it below zero, and it still goes below zero. Why is that? Um, oh, because I'm displaying it before I'm changing it back to zero. It's important to remember the display should be updated at the bottom of your function most, most of the time. Because what was happening there is it was setting it to zero after, after it displayed it, so it wasn't having any effect. Now it should work. So you can see now, it will not go below zero, no matter how hard we try. Okay, the last thing we have to do is code the roll dice function. This is nice and easy as well, although there is a bit of explanation that I will be going into in a moment.
So the next thing we're going to have to do is make the random button do what it should, or the roll dice button, I'm sorry. So we'll create the function now. Uh, what we need to do is we need to, first off, uh, define a function. So, why am I not typing? Function random, what, what am I doing? Random dice roll. Now we don't need to send it anything because we can assume what well, nothing needs to be sent. There's only one roll dice button. Um, and it always does the same thing. Now, so we'll get the element in the uh, we'll get the element. So document dot get element by id dice roll because that's what we call. Oh, we haven't given it an id actually. So let's give that an id now of dice roll. So a id equals equals dice roll. I, if I call that, I can modify that content. So, get what's in dice roll or HTML. So get what's in dice roll, and then make that equal to a random function. Now I'm going to explain this in a bit more detail because a random function is slightly more complicated than you might think, but I'll get to that in a moment. To see why the random number is formatted as it is, please click the annotation below for a short video I did explaining it. So the first thing we're going to do is add a call to the function. So I've added an alert to make sure it works as well. So we'll add a call to the function by um, giving the button a, we'll give the button an on-click event, i.e. when it's clicked, do something. Uh, on clicked, uh, on click, call the random dice roll functions. So Wherever the button is clicked, call this function. So now, if we save that, and I'll just set that to, to hello for the time being, and then run it, roll dice. You can see it changed that to hello and alerted, so we know it's working. So now we'll get rid of the alert. And we'll make it generate a random number. Now, if you didn't watch the video previously, just copy this text that it should work. Math.floor, round the number down. Math.random, generate a random number. Uh, multiply it by our range, which is going to be 20, which is the max, minus the minimum, plus 1, plus 1. Closing bracket. Save that. And then if we run it again, you can see we now get random numbers. So that's the randomness done, and the last thing we have to do is the reset button. The next function we're going to have to code is function reset, basically the function that will then go through and set everything back to its original values. Really, really simple. Uh, document get element by id life. I'm just going to copy it because I really can't be bothered typing it. Equals 20, because it started off as 20. And then document get element by id dice roll to zero because it started off as zero. Equals zero. Close that off. Let's add a call to the function. So we'll just do uh, on the button that resets it, we'll have an on click equals reset, i.e., when it's clicked, run the reset function. And then we'll refresh and test. So you can see we'll set that to a note 14, roll the dice a few times, reset, set them back, both back down to zero. And that's the app complete. All we have to do now is compile it, send it to our phone, make sure it works, and call it a day. So now that we've done all that, the only thing we have to do now is compile it and send it to our phone. So we will then open a command prompt. We will cd, change directory, remember, to our uh, folder which is hello Cordova, it might be called the, or hello Android, sorry. And then we will do uh, Ionic build Android. And then we'll wait a moment. Now that's compiling our APK into a file that we can install on our phone. As you can see, it's going to go through and build it. This will take a moment. I'm going to edit this part out. So now it's fully built, you will then go back to your development folder, go to platforms, Android, Ant build, 
Hello Cordova debug and copy that to your phone. Same way that I showed you before. And that concludes part four of the tutorial. If you just send that file to your phone and run it, you'll see you now have an app which should work just as well as the one that I showed at the start of the previous video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with any of your friends that you think might want to learn this sort of stuff. And thanks for watching.